Reporter Emile Halls says the workplace exodus has even advisors hitting the exits. I went from seeing my newborn son and two and a half year old daughter maybe 30 minutes a day to two and a half hours a day, he said. I just thought there's no way I can go back to my old life. One of the biggest financial industry trends of the year, and really one of the biggest trends in the professional workplace, is something experts are calling the great resignation. Hi, I'm Margot, correspondent for Advisorist. In this video, you'll learn what savvy advisors are doing to improve their work-life balance after the pandemic, the reason why 45% of people are now pushing back their retirement date, the five questions to ask any client who is considering making a career change, and so much more. Let's dive in. The Great Resignation is gaining momentum by the week. More than 4.4 million Americans quit their jobs this past September, marking at least five consecutive months in which this number has increased. But according to an article published by Fortune, the trend of workers leaving their jobs is not consistent across all sectors. Industries that have been hit the hardest include leisure and hospitality, transportation, and food services. Manufacturing quit rates are up 78% since February 2020. Over that same time period, leisure and hospitality has seen its quit rate balloon to 43%. But according to Fortune journalist Megan Leonhardt, other industries aren't seeing nearly the same impact. The Great Resignation is more a story about strong demand for workers rather than a rethink of work among higher income workers. And while she may be statistically correct, certain industries are seeing more workers quit than others. The embers of resignation are burning in the financial services space, and where there's smoke, there's almost always fire. The Great Resignation, also known as the Great Reset or the Big Quit, is a term that economists and psychologists are using to describe the massive movement of working professionals who are leaving their jobs and setting their sights on different and better paying jobs. Anthony Klotz, the Texas A&M University professor who is credited with coining the phrase says, we were all able to take a step back in the last year and spend more time doing other things and really question the value of what we're doing at work. A number of people have made the decision, I need to make a change. While it's created hiring challenges for many businesses, as well as supply chain issues in many markets, it's given millions of workers a heightened sense of autonomy and freedom. This includes insurance and financial advisors. In a recent issue of Investment News, reporter Emile Halls says the workplace exodus has even advisors hitting the exits. He relays the story of financial planner Mike Powers, who spent the past decade working stints at two different RIAs when the pandemic hit, and he saw the possibility of enjoying better work-life balance and flexibility. In May 2021, Powers left his position as VP at the Virginia-based Veris Financial Partners and struck out to start his own independent firm as a virtual financial advisor. I went from seeing my newborn son and two and a half year old daughter maybe 30 minutes a day to two and a half hours a day, he said. I just thought there's no way I can go back to my old life. That sentiment seems to be a common one in our industry. But Hall spoke to a number of advisors for his investment news piece and found that while freeing, leaving employment to start a financial advisor business isn't a decision to take lightly. Even though flexibility comes with independence, people who go out on their own should expect to put in more hours than they did before, he writes. It also is a big financial change as income can drop substantially, at least at first. Brittany Wolf told Halls about her decision to leave a large brokerage firm back in March to start a financial advisor business. She'd always thought of going out on her own, but the recent COVID pandemic showed her that it's more possible than ever. And even though giving up employer-sponsored benefits was costly, she's excited about the income potential that comes with owning her own business. 
Leland Gross, another advisor who described a similar experience, says independent advisors who own their own firms have something that captive advisors don't. You're building an asset that one day you can hopefully sell, he said, but that takes risk. Sometimes though, calculated risk is a good thing. Oh, by the way, if you're finding this video on financial advisor trends and you want to uncover even more ways to grow your practice, then please join thousands of other virtual financial advisors who are registered for the Virtual Advisor Power Hour. It is the number one free weekly sales, marketing, and lead generation training in the industry. Just click on the link in the comments below to register. Hey, it's free. Free. <laughs> okay, now let's take a look at the next point. For virtual financial advisors who do make the shift and go out on their own, there's an added benefit. They know how to talk to clients who are going through similar situations and can walk them through the pros, cons, and considerations of quitting their own jobs. While millions of people have already quit their jobs this year, a recent poll conducted by Personal Capital and Harris Poll shows that two thirds of respondents are actually interested in switching jobs, but they haven't taken the plunge just yet. As an advisor, clients will be coming to you for advice on how to quit and make a career shift without compromising their financial health. And you need to be prepared with answers. Financial advisors aren't always active participants in the job hunting process. Sometimes clients only clue in their advisors after the fact, a recent Barron's article explains. But these days, with switching jobs becoming more commonplace, advisors say clients have been more proactively asking for their advice, and advisors too have been broaching the subject more often in their regular client discussions. Sometimes these conversations involve cash flow. Other times, they're about insurance, benefits, or 401k retirement plans. For some clients, there could be very specific tax questions that arise. For example, if a client doesn't plan on working for several months and their income suddenly drops them into a lower tax bracket, this could be the perfect time to perform a Roth conversation. And if the client is older, say 45 or 50 plus, advisors will need to dig even deeper to help the client understand the ramifications for retirement. A recent survey released by Nationwide Retirement Institute finds that 45% of participants are pushing back their retirement or are no longer planning to retire at all because of the pandemic. Quitting and starting over this late in the game could delay retirement even further. The NRI survey found that participants looking to delay retirement are now expecting to work at least three years longer than they had previously planned. As a result, 48% of individuals are feeling frustrated, 42% are worried, and 38% feel sad. You might be an insurance or financial advisor, but you're also part psychologist and therapist. Make sure you embrace the role at a time when your clients need you most. Not only will this help you add value to your current clients, but it could put you in a position to grow your financial advisor business by generating referral leads. Not sure where to begin? In a recent interview with CNBC, financial advisor and best-selling author Susie Orman offered some tips for financial advisors. She recommends asking clients a few specific questions, like for example, can you make the job you have work for you better? Or, what's your confidence level on an easy re-entry on your own terms? Can you cover health insurance premiums and out-of-pocket costs? Can your finances cover double the amount of time you intend to take off? And finally, are you financially ready to retire? The Great Resignation is real. It's one of the biggest financial industry trends of the decade. Millions of Americans, insurance and financial advisors included, are quitting their jobs and they are setting their sights on better opportunities, more lucrative pay, and perhaps most importantly, greater freedom and flexibility. Brick and mortar advisory is no longer the only way. The industry is now led by independent virtual financial advisors. As an advisor, you shouldn't be afraid to make this move either. And you should certainly be ready to coach your own clients through their own career shifts. 
If you found this discussion on financial advisor trends and you want to uncover even more ways to grow your practice, please join thousands of other virtual financial advisors who are registered for the Virtual Advisor Power Hour, the number one free weekly sales, marketing, and lead generation training in the industry. Just click the link in the comments below. Finally, what do you think the great resignation will do to the financial services industry? What are you seeing out there? And also, did I miss a point? <laughs> Leave your comments below because I would love to hear from you. And as always, please hit the like and subscribe buttons for more great training, tools, and updates from Advisorist. See you soon.